Hello and welcome to the unlucky number of my blog. It is blog 13. It's vlog 13, not blog. What am I saying? Right, so I'm going to try a slightly different format this time. I'm going to show you how I make some of the things I make. This may be considered a tutorial. Right, so the thing I'm going to show you is bases and how they are done. Well, one particular kind of base I do. Can you hear the ambulance in the background? I can! Right, and quick camera wobble there just to show you that things have not improved in quality. Right. So, uh, let's get the 13 out of the way in an amusing manner. That kind of hurt my finger. Right, so... This is a roll of textured wallpaper. It looks an incredible amount, and brilliantly so, like stone. And I picked this up for about £20 from Homebase. And this is good stuff, it's, it's vinyl wallpaper. And I'll um, come to a point about that later, probably. Or I might not. This is completely unscripted and sometimes I forget to say things. You may note in the last video I said one to make sort of point one of two and never got round to making the point two. And um, in case anyone's wondering, the point two was it fits down the corridor. Ah, go back and watch that so that's in context. Right, enough of getting off track already barely into the video. Right, so this wallpaper is made by a company called Belgravia Decor and other words that appear on the packaging are Cenero and Petra Petria uh, I will um, post a link to a website that sells it uh, in the um, doobly-doo below and um, it's not Homebase, the one I've got a link to, but if I can find a link to Homebase and they still sell it, I will post that as well there. If you're in America, you will have to order this internationally, and it'll be very expensive for you, and it's probably not worth it, and I'm really sorry, but now you know how I feel when I watch DM Scotty's video, and he's, he's just sort of there showing me something, oh, I'd like to make that, I'd like to make that thing. And he's just there going, uh, uh, Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's. And I don't have those stores. I can't get the things in those stores. The nearest thing we have is Hobbycraft, which is, is terrible. Well, it's not terrible, but it, it doesn't stock as nice stuff as your American craft stores do. So, um, sorry America, um, you had this one coming. Right, I am going to see if this will amusingly roll out of frame. Ah, that was good, wasn't it? It was like a special effect, but rubbish. Right. So, bases. Things you are going to need to make them. A piece of wallpaper. Bases. Glue of the Yuhu variety and a connected and working pair of scissors. It's no use having your pair of scissors separated, they won't work. Right. You do not need a pencil, but I have one to hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I did these. Or how, how I do these. Showing you how I did it implies I've got ones to show you that are already finished. Which I do, um, but I'm going to show you later. Right, so here we go. So what you do is you get a piece of the wallpaper. And you cut it down to a reasonable size you can work with. Then you get the bases. 
I have three of them. Now, uh, you can use any shape or make bases you like. I'm using these ones made by Dyson Games that are fairly industry standard ones and have, compared to Citadel bases, have fairly smooth texture on top which makes the wallpaper stick a bit better. That's what they're like. Um, they're, they're industry standard. Most miniature companies will carry something like this that they provide with their miniatures. Right, let's begin, shall we? Right, so first the standard size slotter base, and what you do is you put glue on it, as clumsily as you like. Now what I've done, you can't see this, but I have uh, dropped the cap, and I have to reach way out of shot to um, go and get it again, so I'm just going to do this quickly. And I'm going to get glue freaking everywhere. And my voice is going to go croaky. You know what? Did not have a croaky voice when I woke up this morning. And about three minutes before I started filming, I started coughing and now I have a croaky voice. So, this is now my signature thing, croaky voice on video. There we go. Now the trick is to not to put too much glue on. And you might be able to see what I'm doing here. As you press it down... Wiggle it a bit so that the glue spreads out. Look at that, ruining my bit of wood. There were huge blobs of glue. So, it's uh, like that. Good coverage. And you'll want good coverage for the um, penultimate step. Oh, another tool that might be useful to have to hand is a knife. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get away with not using one, uh, but I might grab one in a jump cut later. Right, there we go, that's three glued down, and now we need to grab the lid for the glue, which is over here, out of shot, there it is, and put the lid back on, that's very important, do something about that blob that spilled there. So, now we are going to wait for the glue to dry. Okay, yeah, 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 that was completely unnecessary. Right. In fact, I haven't actually waited for the glue to dry. I've completely faked it because here's why I blue petered earlier. This is the one that's still gluing. This was all in real time. Ha, ha, I deceive you with bad editing. Right. So, let's pretend this is the same piece from earlier and the glue has dried. And by earlier, I mean mere seconds ago. Right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to take the scissors and we are going to cut these out. And what you need to do is be very careful and cut as close to the edge of the base as possible. Like this. And try and do it near where the focus of the camera on your phone is. That's a vitally important step if you're just making a video about it. But um, don't make a video about this, because I've already made one right now that you're watching. And um, why don't you just send the viewers this way instead of making your own tutorial of someone else's technique. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah? You know. Right, so that's, that's a bit rough at the moment, but that's basically it. We'll clean that with a knife in a minute. Here we go. these out as well. So this could be something I'd do as a jump cut, but no, I'm going to sit here and make you watch this as I very slowly and awkwardly try to cut this out in front of a camera. Go. 
I've no idea how well framed this is because um, I want to see this properly. I'm looking above the phone and not into the screen. But I think I roughly got it centre frame. And my hands are probably covering up most of what's going on anyway, but you can you can probably see what's going on. That one's come out a bit neater than the other one. And finally, this larger, large-ish, um, 30mm base. Like I said, uh, this works with all, all sorts of shapes and size bases and makes. There are many makes available. Uh, this just happens to be all I'm using. Uh, there we go. Right. Um, yeah, that one's not come out quite as neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump cut and get a knife. Right, there we go. And what we're going to do is just use the knife to clean up these edges. Just lay it flat with the edge there. This can fray a little bit, you, you can sort it out. There we go. That's better than it was. You can actually spend quite a while. I'm, I'm rushing this a little bit because I'm doing it on video. Go, there's that one. The only real bit that went wrong was there. Just sort of scrape. This stuff's, uh, I guess, paper with like a vinyl coating to it. So you can reasonably well cut it. It kind of frays a bit, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, any sort of fraying to the paper bit you can seal down with uh, PVA glue or, or just with a paint when you paint it actually. We go, I hope I'm doing this somewhere near where focus is. Here we go. These are great bases for, uh, well, your dungeon floors, which is what I use them for, but if you if you play like uh, Mordheim or Frostgrave, they're great for sort of city street looking type texture as well. Now I also use a very similar technique using Plasticard, which I've done a non-video tutorial for, and in that case you use uh, plastic glue. I will even post a link to that on the, um, the old forum I used to run if people are interested. Uh, just leave me a comment, I'll post that. Uh, the same tutorial also appears on a HeroQuest fan site who um, stole the content without asking. But please don't visit there. I mean, it's not a bad site, but I don't like the fact they stole my content. Here we go. Right, that's... That's pretty much all cleaned up those three. Right. Yep, so a little rougher than usual because um, I've done it quickly on video, but that's your base is finished. Right. Now, painting. These, as I've mentioned, are made using vinyl wallpaper. And that stuff does not take water-based paint brilliantly. So what you need is a good primer, and I don't mean a spray primer. I'm going to show you the primer I've been using for things that don't take paint well. One moment, there will be a jump cut. Here it is, this is the stuff. This is Zero Black Primer by um, MP, which stands for Miniature Paints, or Miniature, yeah, Miniature Paints, and you can buy this from Ralpatha Europe. I will put a link to their website in the doobly-doo below, as well as uh, links to other things I may have mentioned. So there you go, um, that's what you want to use. Just put that on with a brush, brush on primer. It's even a picture of a brush on the pot there, well a very stylized one. It may just be a line that's crying sideways. I don't know, I assume it's a brush. It's a brush. Uh, yeah, don't mix that with water, just put it straight on, uh, do a thin coat, and if it doesn't cover properly, do a second thin coat. 
don't just put a huge thick coat on that won't help you right that's it for my uh, first tutorial video it is just over 15 minutes long and it is getting longer by the second so until next time goodbye and I need a goodbye catchphrase <laughs>